Can you see that? Yes, looks great. Okay, awesome. Okay, so today we're gonna walk through some Harvest of the Month basics. We're gonna go through the portal and look at all the resources and materials that are available to you. And then Kim Lloyd is gonna talk about all the amazing things she's doing in Helena for Harvest of the Month. Then we'll go over some upcoming events regarding Farm to Cafeteria. And like I said, we'll save a little bit of time at the end for questions. So I'm Molly Kirkham. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a Montana local food specialist at the National Center for Appropriate Technology. And I co-coordinate Montana Harvest of the Month with Aubrey Roth at Montana Team Nutrition at MSU. Kim, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kim Lloyd and I am the Harvest of the Month Community Coordinator based in Helena with St. Peter's Health. Awesome, thanks. So first we're gonna go through some Harvest of the Month basics for each audience group. These are our project partners. They help with material development, outreach, communications, projects, and events. And then what is Harvest of the Month? So the Montana Harvest of the Month program showcases Montana grown and raised foods in Montana schools, institutions, organizations, and businesses. The two primary goals of this program are to promote local healthy foods to Montanans and to support Montana farmers, ranchers, and food businesses. So each month, participating sites, sites focus on promoting one locally grown item by serving it in at least one meal, snack, or a la carte offering and displaying or distributing Harvest of the Month materials. Additionally, schools and early care and education settings participate by offering taste tests to students and doing educational lessons and activities. Each month, sites focus on promoting one locally grown item from a school or from the cafeteria program as it provides an easy framework to follow and ready to use materials. Upon registration and completing the baseline survey, sites receive a free packet of materials with posters, handouts, and table tents. They also receive access to recipes, videos, guides, resources, implementation ideas, and relative, relevant events and funding opportunities through the portal. And then this is this year's calendar. You can see that last month was cherries and this month is herbs. It's actually our newest item. And we also have kale, summer squash, and winter squash that aren't on the calendar. But when you register for Harvest of the Month, you still receive all those materials in your packet. And you, there's online, there's recipes and everything for them still. And you're welcome to replace anything in the calendar or showcase two items one month. Like for example, I know the cherry harvest um, was not as fruitful as usual, usual up in Flathead. So a lot of sites did zucchini instead because there's always so much zucchini. So yeah, if you can't follow the calendar and winter squash is more easily accessible than say lentils in December, just do what you can. All right, so now we're gonna go over site type. When you register, you choose a type that best fits your site and we have them split into four or five categories, producer, healthcare, business and community, early care and education, which we always refer to as ECE, and then K through 12. So we'll start by going over the K through 12 requirements. K through 12 includes elementary, middle and high school after school programs, and then summer food service programs. So with K2, K through 12 especially, it is crucial to form a team. This should be done before registration and the team must include an administrator, school nutrition professional, and educator. Other recommended team members are community organizations, SNAP ed instructors, extension agents, producers, parents, students, and other stakeholders. Sites, sites must have a team lead as the main point of contact. This is really important for like staff turnover and just continuing to promote the program. So oh. sites, sites must also um, showcase each month by featuring it in a meal or snack. This is Farm to School Park County with an amazing salad. And then they must perform an educational activity. So, as seen here, students are painting with beet juice and learning about rainbow carrots. Activity suggestions are provided in our classroom handouts, but sites can do whatever education makes sense for them. And it can be as simple as reading the fun facts on the handout or showing the Harvest of the Month video. So then sites must perform a taste test with students. 
This is, and there is a helpful taste test guide on the portal. It's linked below. Um, some common strategies are to hand out like tried it stickers or just any fun stickers that go with the theme and then also allow kids to mark if they tried it, liked it, or loved it. And then sites should promote their Harvest of the Month program and the current item by displaying posters and handouts, posting Harvest of the Month activities on social media, including Harvest of the Month in newsletters and sending home participation letters to caregivers. So this is an example of Farm to School Park County's social media post. And then also what you can do in the classroom with the posters, handouts, and the like tried it, liked it, loved it in the back. Also little recipe cards in the corner there. And then every, the evaluation requirements are the same for all audience groups. So sites must complete the baseline survey upon registration and the end of your survey by June 30th. And then once you complete the baseline survey, your packet of materials will be sent. So registration and baseline survey, and then the materials are sent. And then the end of your survey completed by June 30th re-enrolls you into the program for next year. All right, so the early care and education requirements are really similar to K through 12, but where it differs is um, the team. Each team in this case should include an administrator or director, teacher, and individual who, who prepares or purchases the snack or meal. Sometimes, especially for ECE, this is all one person. And um, we encourage sites to involve parents, nonprofits, and other community members with ECE as well. And then similar to K through 12, they'll showcase the Harvest of the Month product each month in a meal or snack, educational activity, and a taste test. The sites will promote the program using Harvest of the Month materials provided or come up with their own creative way. And then all like K through 12, they must participate in the same evaluation. So these are a few examples of ECE implementation. This is YMCA in Missoula's menu. They're showcasing chickpeas. You might, it, be, it might be really small, but it's highlighted there. The different chickpea meals they're doing, like hummus and chips and such. And then this is at Munchkin Land Daycare, um, the chickpea activity they did. Okay, so the business and community requirements. Business and community sites include, but are not limited to, groceries, food pantries, farmers markets, and restaurants. And as you can see, there are many different organizations and businesses that fall under this umbrella. So due to the variation in structure and purpose, the requirements for this audience group are a bit more flexible than ECE and K through 12. Um, sites will still form a team, showcase the Harvest of the Month product each month, promote Harvest of the Month, and participate in evaluation. However, the way they complete these requirements will differ. The sites form a team. When sites form a team, they are encouraged to think about what positions should be involved to successfully implement and sustain a Harvest of the Month program. There must be a team lead and at least one other team member. Listed are some potential positions that might be included on a team. In order to showcase each month, the site must make the Harvest of the Month item they are promoting available to their customers. For example, it could be served or sold in meals in a grocery store section like the produce, dairy, or beef and bison, in a grab-and-go section, or at a farmer's market stand. And then many food pantries also offer samples to their customers. And some business and community organizations offer free cooking classes to promote Harvest of the Month. They should promote the Harvest of the Month by displaying posters and materials in their meal serving area, produce section, or where appropriate, and use handouts, recipe cards, and videos to promote and educate staff and patrons about Harvest of the Month. And then they must also participate in the same evaluation. So for business and community, we now include non-food service sites. So that includes organizations like University Extension, SNAP Ed, libraries, dentists, nutritionist's office, community development centers. Um, these are sites that don't serve food, but they are also interested in promoting health in their community, and they, they can participate through promotions. Some examples include reading and showcasing books featuring the Harvest of the Month item, distributing recipe cards and handouts provided by Harvest of the Month, and hanging posters. So here are some examples of business and community sites. This is North Valley Food Bank offering samples to their customers. Same with the Helena Food Share. And then this is the um, Butte Harvest of the Month family cooking night that happened last week showcasing cherries. 
And then, so now let's go over healthcare audience group. This audience group can include hospitals, nursing homes, treatment centers, and any other healthcare facility that offers food to their customers. Healthcare facilities will form a team that should include an administrator, food service professional, and dietitian or clinical staff member. They will showcase each month by purchasing and integrating the harvest of the month food and at least one meal or a la carte option and plan for and provide at least one educational or promotional activity per month. They will promote the program by displaying Harvest of the Month posters and materials in their meal serving area or where appropriate for them. And then they must participate in evaluation as well. We don't require taste tests for business and community and healthcare sites. Um, some prefer to do it, but it is not a requirement because we know some people might not have the capacity or the right, right way to right structure to do that. And then the producer requirements. So this audience group includes Montana producers, processors, and distributors. When producer sites register, they should let partners, staff, and other stakeholders know that they are interested in producing and participating in Harvest of the Month in order to confirm that they're, everyone is on board with, in their team and knows that they are going to sign up for Harvest of the Month. Their team will vary on their business structure, but we recommend outlining their harvest of the month goals and recruiting team members who can help execute these goals. Producers must offer at least one harvest of the month item throughout the year. This could also be a value added item. So they might not grow cherries, but they make cherry jam with local cherries. And then sites should promote by using harvest of the month handouts, recipe cards, and videos to promote and educate staff and patrons about harvest of the month. And then we would also like um, participating producer sites to be interested in sharing their knowledge through hosting site visits and tours or teaching classes, giving presentations or tutorials, offering to be filmed for the Harvest of the Month videos, and then participating in student projects is awesome as well. And then just some recommendations regarding Harvest of the Month that is relevant for all audience groups. Um, forming a team is extra important. Important, Like I said, there's been a lot of staff changes lately and turnover um, everywhere. So uh, if it's only one person on a team who knows who is implementing Harvest of the Month, then odds are it's not gonna continue through that staff change. So that's why we say farm forming a team is so important. And then getting 4-H, MSU Extension, Future, Farmers of America and other community organizations involved can be awesome. A lot of times they'll donate food, like in Polson, FFA donated some chickens for a hatching project. MSU Extension um, in Madison and Jefferson does cool demonstrations at camp, summer camps and um, a lot more. They can provide a lot of information for schools and ECE centers. And then don't be worried that you don't have the capacity to implement Harvest of the Month. You can always ease into it and do what you can. If you can't do a taste test once one month, that's fine. Hang up the posters, hand out some recipe cards, just do what you can. And then document your Harvest of the Month activities and send them in. You're, um, you never know, you could inspire another site, um, give them a good idea to implement. And then feature Harvest of the Month as a monthly section in newsletter. We provide all of the information for that. We have great like social media content, newsletter content, illustrations that you're welcome to use and we'll go through the portal and I'll show you that they're all on there. Um, so it's super easy to just do that every month and it lets your stakeholders know that you're participating participating in Harvest of the Month and you never know they might wanna come help or be a part of it. And then make sure all staff know about Harvest of the Month and create a consistent schedule that can help some sites. I know Farm to School Park County does it. They like to do Farm Fresh Fridays. And that just helps them get on a schedule and make sure they don't miss anything. Um, so that really works for some sites. And then read our Harvest of the Month newsletters. Um, we send them out to all sites. They have awesome grant opportunities, webinars, workshops, and Harvest of the Month stories. Okay, so now I am going to show you a little bit about the portal. Yeah. Right. Kim, can you see the Montana Harvest of the Month website? Yep, looks good. Okay, great. So this is the landing page for Harvest of the Harvest of the Month portal. Um, 
you can see it describes a little bit about what Montana Harvest of the Month is. And then right here under this month's Montana Harvest of the Month is herbs. Usually there's a video that's still in production. Um, so we're just showcasing some of our illustrations. If you scroll down further, there are relevant um, up and upcoming events. For instance, the webinar we're on right now, and then the Montana Farm to School producer training. And then down here, there's just more posts um, that maybe are a little less pressing, announcements, and then events. So then we'll hover over about and click. This just goes into more in depth of what the program is and the goals of it, how it works, a little video tutorial, the calendar, and then why we do Harvest of the Month. If you hover over that, you can get to the Harvest of the Month coordinator contact, other resources that's just like other videos, the Abundant Montana site, the Montana Farm to School site. And then this is an important page, Getting Started. This has all the Harvest of the Month 101s, which tells you how to successfully implement Harvest of the Month. And then the checklist, if you want an easy, simple way to make sure you're completing things each month. An implementation guide for K through 12. And then the posters. And this is important because this will be a better place to print the posters out than um, like a post, for instance, at the bottom of the landing page. And then just a couple more guides and resources and trainings open to the public. So yeah, this is all before signing in, you can see this. And then who's participating? This map is updated bi-annually by um, Abundant Montana. This is actually linked to their site, um, but these are all the participating institutions and organizations. There's everyone on here except the producers, but um, yeah, you can click on these and get like their email, name, or phone number, where they are, address, and such if you ever want to contact another Harvest of the Month site. And then upon registration, we make sure that sites are okay with having their um, information on here. And then if you highlight who's participating and click on the producer directory, this are, these are producers that have registered for Harvest of the Month. Um, and we try to put relevant information to make procurement easier. So for instance, there's their business address, products, contacts, how if they, if they would like to be contacted, if their business delivers pickup sites, if they distribute through anyone, and if they would like to be contacted to host farm tours or visit Harvest of the Month sites, and then who they're interested in selling to. So like a K through 12 or an ECE site doesn't waste their time if they're not interested in selling to those type of institutions. This will soon be changed to the Abundant Montana platform. We're just gonna make sure first that we can still have all of this relevant information on the map. And then the Harvest of the Month in Action page. This, if you, when you tag hashtag MT Harvest of the Month, this is um, where your post will go. So we post creative implementation of Harvest of the Month on here and we tag what kind of item it is and what kind of site it is in case sites are looking for ideas, say a school can come in and say, oh, this K through 12 school did grains, what can I do the same thing? And then it just, when you click read more, it goes into more detail about what they did. So to get on this, you can either yeah, do the hashtag MP Harvest of the Month on Instagram or Facebook, or send it directly to my email. And so then to the right over there is register. It has a little bit more information. You can select the type, for instance, we'll click producer. You can see the instructions, what the requirements are, put in all your information form and your team member information and all team members will be added to the Harvest of the Month newsletter. And then credentials and for producers specific, we have all of these extra questions to ask about their business. And then once you register, you can log in right after. Um, but like I said, you will not get your materials until you complete the baseline survey. And you 
can get a link to, you'll get a link to that in your email when you register, but also you can access it from the uh, website when you log in. All right, so I'm gonna log in as a K-12 member. Okay, so you can see the landing page looks pretty similar. You'll have more access though once you log in to all the materials and such. So we'll go over getting started is gonna be more catered towards um, K through 12 when you're logged in. So you can see th th this was on the landing page, but this is educator resources that wasn't available to the public, but these guides and other resources weren't. And then all of these trainings and archives newsletters. Then if you go to monthly materials, this is where you will spend the bulk of your time. You can click on these to access all the materials for each item. And then if you go down here, you can see the archived materials that are on the calendar. So we're gonna go through herbs since it's September and it's our newest item. Takes a second to load. Okay, this is the herbs page. If you scroll down, you can see all the materials. Usually there's a video, video transcript and recipe video there. Like I said, we're still working on that, but it should be up by the end of September. Here you can access a small poster on 11 by 17 for printing, a large poster if you have the capability to print that. You can purchase additional posters for a pretty good price at MSU. And then these are all of the handouts. So the cafeteria bites handout. Actually, we'll click on it and see if you can see it. Can you can can you see this? Yes. Okay, awesome. So this is the cafeteria bites handout. It has the did you know section. This is we mentioned this earlier that if um, you don't have time to complete a harvest of the month activity you can still just maybe read these herbs facts um, about, these are just fun facts on the left. Did you know things? And then selection, how to select them at a grocery store or harvest, how to store herbs. This is a fun table that goes into more detail because there are so many herbs. And then these, this is the K through 12 um, classroom handout. So the, recipe is scaled for 25 and 50 servings. Um, for ECE, it's scaled through for six and 25 because those facilities tend to be a bit smaller. And then it has all the nutrition analysis. The next recipe. And different ways you can cook with herbs, nutrition information, gardening tips, and that's it. And then this is the Harvest of the Month at Home handout. This is perfect for sending home with students or customers. It has the same did you know, but it also has buying tips, which is um, like a combination of the storage and selection sections on the classroom handout. It has a book note in case you want to read about herbs, more facts, gardening tips, and then the recipes, but for six servings, because it tends to be a better um, amount for home. Then let's see if the classroom handout. Oh, here's an early care and education kitchen bites. This is gonna be pretty similar. The only thing that is different with early care and education is um, the activity and at the Harvest of the Month at Home handout, there is a um, there are photos of the items in the recipe in case reading isn't a strength of the child yet. So this is the classroom bite. This one's important because it has the activity you can see here, activities Casey Casey testing from National Agriculture in the classroom for grades three through five. So if you have the time and capacity. This is an awesome activity to do, and we provide all the materials and all the directions um, for the activity and like how long it'll take and what um, objectives 
and standards it meets. So those are the handouts. And then we also have newsletter content. This is what I was talking about with putting Harvest of the Month in your newsletter and um, on your social media platforms. We provide the newsletter verbiage and um, you can edit it how you would like to. We also provide some social media posts and all the logos and illustrations can be found on here um, and also on the site to be downloaded. And then these are, we have our sources that we use um, to write the handouts. We have a menu template, which is awesome for food service professionals to use. It's already um, like made so the dates match up well. And then it has a couple of fun facts. This is great to be printed and hung up somewhere near the cafeteria. And then we have a food service line sign that can also be like laminated and hung up that month to showcase. And then we have table tents that you get in the mail, not for every item. We only have them for like 10 of the items on the calendar. And a social media post you can use, that's actually this right here. You can use the banner up top for your Facebook page. And then this is where you can download um, the logo and illustrations. And then also we have the recipes right here on a single recipe card and then printable two recipe cards. That just means that two cards will be on one piece of paper. And then if we have any additional activities, we'll put them down here and those links to the forum. So that is where we will go next. The forum is meant for participants to use to share recipes, to post this about a story that they or implementation activity that they had, to ask questions. Um, and it's dedicated. There's a K through 12 one, ECE producer, but then there's also general ones like the Harvest of the Month activity board, Harvest of the Month questions and answers. And you can um, edit your profile so that you get um, that you get so you get notifications on um, if someone posted in, say, the Harvest of the Month classifies, you can subscribe to them. So then the next thing we'll do is click on reports. This is important. It looks like this one hasn't been updated for the this school year, but the baseline survey, that's what you'll complete in order to get your materials. And then the end of your report is what you'll complete to re-enroll into the program. And then the last thing I wanna show you is that you can edit your profile by hovering over home and clicking profile. You can see here, you can change your password and edit your information and team members and how many sites you have. All right, that is it for the portal. Um, Kim, uh, I think it's you. Let me scroll down. Yes, uh, and I do wanna share that Suzanne uh, just asked a question in the chat. She works at the public library and they registered as a business community and serve all ages. Is it possible that they can get the materials for children that are given to the schools or do they only get the adult target audience materials? Um, no, you can get the, you'll get the um, materials targeted towards schools. So actually all of our handouts are targeted towards um, K through 12 or early care and education settings. Um, and then the harvest of the month at home is just a little bit more oriented towards parents. Awesome. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, Molly invited me to present on what we're doing here in Helena. I work uh, for St. Peter's Health, which is our regional hospital based in Helena. And um, I'm fortunate enough to be hired to implement the Harvest of the Month program in our community and surrounding communities around Helena, uh, using it as a tool, I guess, to help uh, promote healthy living and a connection to ed. Uh, so I can do the next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's okay. So, um, 
I, the first question I always get asked when I introduce myself is uh, how do I uh, have this position? How does the hospital support this? So um, we have a population health department at St. Pete's and really focused on upstream population level work. What can we do to help prevent chronic disease in our community and uh, try to keep people out of the hospital? So um, the hospital gets funding. We have a foundation that gets funding through grants and uh, private donations. And then also uh, the hospital gets funds uh, to provide chronic disease prevention in the community too. So we have a couple of different funds that help uh, support a position like mine in the community. We also have a very active kids nutrition coalition that's made up of, of a bunch of partners in the Helena community um, and they supported and advocated for a position like this, someone that can go into schools, especially and provide nutrition education as well as a variety of other things around the community. So next slide, please. Uh, so I've been hired as the community coordinator, Harvest of the Month, and really it is a tool that we're using to promote wellness and uh, the prevention of chronic diseases. So I have a work group uh, that I uh, have all the partners that want to help see this project through. I work with Helena Food Share, our local food bank, the school district, Head Start, SNAP-Ed. Uh, we all meet uh, quarterly to talk through what kinds of things we want to do with Harvest of the Month in the Helena area. And our goals are to uh, increase access to a variety of healthy food, make sure that we can find ways to connect with local ag, and ultimately connect the food we eat with health outcomes through nutrition education programs. Uh, next slide. So I've been in my position for almost a year now. And the first thing that we wanted to tackle is to bring nutrition education into the classroom uh, using Harvest of the Month. So we've been, we established Harvest of the Month as a, a fourth grade program in our district, uh, working with the superintendent. That was his suggestion is that we just have one grade that gets to do Harvest of the Month to start off. Um, Helena has a central kitchen that is managed by Sodexo, which is a food service company. It's tough for us to get local foods into our uh, lunchroom. We're working towards it, but it's a hard place to start. So uh, the place to start was to go into the classroom and provide uh, tastings and uh, nutrition education lessons. So we have 11 elementary schools in Helena, and I myself am not able to go into every classroom and teach Harvest of the Month. Um, so a unique thing about our program is that we are using uh, volunteer teachers. So we, last year I had uh, four Helena High School students from the culinary arts class and then myself and we uh, developed little 30 minute uh, harvest of the month lessons using information from the uh, harvest in the classroom handout that Molly just showed. There are uh, some uh, lesson plan ideas in there. And we would just write up a script for myself and the high school students to follow and go into the classroom and try to come with in, up with engaging lessons uh, that get, got the students involved. My favorite was the high school students had the fourth graders writing some um, raps about beats. And uh, then they, since they're a culinary arts classroom, they can make a food. And so we do the 30 minute nutrition lesson and then the kids get a taste the food that the culinary arts students brought in. Um, this year, we are also gonna have some uh, Carroll College class. We have a private college here in Helena. So I have an entire public health class, 20 college students. And then this year I have 10 Helena High students. And so I'm coordinating all 30 of those to uh, go out and teach lessons in our elementary schools and fourth grade classrooms. And then uh, as much as I can, trying to connect schools to uh, funding and uh, resources in order to uh, support their school gardens and other ideas for lesson extensions. But yeah, right now we're just doing tastings in the classroom and then the lessons, um, the nutrition education lesson to go along with it. Uh, next slide. And then another uh, partner starting off right away, of course, was Helena Food Share, which is our local food pantry. They have an awesome tool called the Charlie Cart. 
and it is a, a kitchen on wheels essentially it's you it's like imagine you're at Costco and they're handing out the samples it's like that but like a bigger cart that you actually plug in and inside the cart there is a blender a cooktop a um a toaster oven and it um it's made, I mean, it's made to do like food demos, but it's also made to engage people in the cooking process, especially kids. So also inside the cart, there are things like a bunch of rolling pins, measuring cups, measuring spoons, uh, little plastic knives, so that uh, kids in a classroom could uh, help with food preparation. And we got the, Helena Food Share got the cart through um, a grant through the city. Uh, quite a few years ago, but at the, so we use it at Helena Food Share to pass out Harvest of the Month samples using produce in the, uh, that's in the pantry. Helena Food Share does a great job of sourcing local foods. And so we do a monthly uh, tasting where we prepare food on the Charlie cart. And then as folks come through the line and get their food, they can grab in June here, we did a leafy green salad. So that's the uh, leafy green salad that we passed out there in the picture. And then we're also bringing the Charlie cart into the schools this year too, since it's mobile. All right, next slide, please. And uh, just to pause for a second, Nina, I see your message. Uh, if I work with Chloe, and yes, I do. She is on my work group. And um, we also uh, talk about our Harvest of the Month. She brings Harvest of the Month tastings in as a snap ed instructor to the classes that she does for the ones that she's able to. Um, and we help, we kind of, we are trying to collect data as a community to, I guess, show the larger impact. So she helps to share her data uh, with me too. Um, and I, I guess I'll also say, Nina, that uh, Chloe and I are, uh, there's a school in the community that wants to have uh, parent um, cooking and nutrition lessons. And so we're working with the school to hopefully get some creates lessons. Uh, for those and she can do a full series of lessons eventually. But yes, work very closely with SnapEd. So, uh, sorry, I also uh, started the farmer's market lessons this past summer too. So I went to our, we have a Saturday morning market and I, uh, I made a material myself for harvest of the month. That's a, I call it the harvest of the market passport. So it's just the size of like a passport and it's a little book that you open and it has, we did May through September. So we had like a little box for, um, we did beets and leafy greens and kale and cherries. And for each month that the kids came by my booth, they got a stamp uh, to learn about harvest of the month at the market. So I had all the harvest of the month materials out like the harvest at home and the recipes and the posters uh, for the food. And then um, also in my booth, I would have a little uh, arts and crafts activity for the kids to come in and uh, just be engaged with their food too. So the farmer's market booth was very successful. I would say it's kind of a slow start at the market, but this last uh, market was very busy and I've had a few families that have been to every market and filled up their passports. So we'll give them a prize at our last market in September. Uh, next slide. And then, of course, since I work for St. Pete's, I had to get something going at the hospital. So we have a public cafe, uh, and it's mostly employees and patients that eat there, but the public's welcome to come in too. And I would love to make it a place where people want to come in and uh, eat locally sourced food. And that's definitely a future goal. But we do uh, tastings in the public cafe. So um, for instance, the month of chickpeas, the kitchen made two different chickpea salads and I had a little station set up right on the line in the cafe where I passed out the two samples of the chickpea salads and then people voted which one they liked the best. And then the month after or the week after they featured the winning recipe on the menu um, for, the, for the day. And then so we also do they hang up the poster in the cafe and we put out the table tents on all the tables. Um, then we also do the um, all the newsletter info. I send that out in the employee newsletter uh, once a month too, with like the videos and the um, harvest at home uh, handout. So in case any of our offices or um, clinics wanna put that out in a public space, they're welcome to too. Okay, next slide, do I have one more? 
Oh yeah, well, what the future holds. So we're gonna continue to try to expand this program in the Helena area. Um, Suzanne, I talked with her last week at the library. Hopefully we'll get a program uh, going at the Lewis and Clark Library and maybe some of the branches, especially with the books that are uh, provided in the um, Harvest in the Classroom handout. There's a book list of books that can be featured. Um, we came up with a lot of things we can do at the, at the library, possibly bring the Charlie card in and do tastings in the lobby or do some uh, nutrition ad lessons in the public meeting rooms. And then, um, of course, continuing to work with the healthcare offices at the hospital, but we also talked about reaching out to dentist offices uh, to promote foods that don't uh, wreck your teeth. Um, and uh, we have a couple of restaurants that have signed on as Harvest of the Month participants in Helena, but there's a ton more that we can reach out to. They've been featuring the food uh, on their menu and hanging up the posters. And then we haven't tackled this one yet, but grocery stores are on the list too. We'd like to uh, work with grocery stores to either have the monthly food on sale or maybe at least like post the recipe and maybe show where to find all the ingredients in the grocery store and maybe like a cost of what it would cost to make that if you bought all the ingredients at the store. And then um, we just got a mini grant for Harvest of the Month to expand to early childhood we have a um, Head Start classroom and our Pete's Place, which is the 